Hi guys, I'm going to go over this um, first homework problem in section 7.3. Um, we want to know if a population is normally distributed. Okay, so what we're going to do is um, we have to make a normal probability plot. Okay, so I'm going to enter all of these into our calculator. I did that in list one. Here's our calculator right here. Okay, so I put all of our values in, a, in list one. To get our normal probability plot, let's go second stat plot. All right, all my plots are off, except for the first one. And it's this bottom right emblem, okay? Then I'm gonna do a little zoom nine. And there's our normal probability plot. And now what we have to do, we have to determine if this is linear. And, you know, visually we can look at it and we're like, yeah, it's kind of linear, you know. Some might argue it looks kind of like a cubic function. Um, but so what we're going to do next is we're going to get all of the corresponding normal scores. And how we do that is we hit trace. And this gives the x value or the, um, the data value, the data observation. And this is the corresponding normal score. Okay. And we're going to put all of the normal scores into list 2. And the thing is, we have to make them corresponding to the original observation. So I'm going to write down all of these right now. So bear with me. 8, 6, 3. That's the first normal score. Then we're going to hit the left arrow and go to the next one. Then we're going to hit the left arrow and go to the next normal score. Negative 1.009, but round it up, right? So negative 1.009. 0, 1, 0. The next normal score for 0 0.207 is negative 0 0.776. So I'm going to write that down. Uh, hold on one second. All right, sorry about that. So um, we're just going to keep going with our normal scores. Remember, order is very important. And then I'm just going through, I'm writing down all the normal scores. And then notice at this point they get positive. And so the second half, we're, we're going to have the same normal scores that we had before, but instead of being negative, they're going to be positive. So for instance, the next one, I, I can look at my list without even pushing the right arrow. I know it's going to be 0.237. Bam, isn't that exciting? All right, and that's because um, normal distributions are symmetrical. So that's why we have this nice symmetry about the zero. All right, so with that in mind, I'm just going to write down all the other normal scores I have on my paper. I don't have to repeat it all the way. Okay, guys, so this is what we're going to do next. We use the normal probability plot to get the normal scores. Let's go back to our list, so stat edit. Um, when I first, and I, I should have mentioned this when I was talking about putting it in L1, I happen to put this in order, okay? So it goes from smallest to biggest. And look at this right here. It's going from smallest to biggest if we go across. And that's important because our normal scores also um, go smallest to biggest, right? On this graph, this is the smallest x value or observation. Then it's the largest. It's getting bigger, 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 bigger. So the um, L1, L2, that has to be corresponding. All right, so um, let's take a moment and just enter in all of our, uh, oh, I, I know why. I'm doing it on my keyboard, and I should have on the calculator. That minus sign needs to be a negative sign. I'm sure you guys have done that. I think that's a super common mistake. So negative 1.318. Negative 1.010. Very hard on a keyboard. Okay, there we go. Negative um, 0.776. Okay. This is going very slow. You know, let me, um, I'm going to pause it because I can do this faster. 
I'm just, I can do it faster. So let me, let me pause. We're going to do a little video magic. When you come back, I'll put in all of the normal scores. And oh, again, if, in case you wanted, these are all the ones I was writing down, right, as we were going. So that's why it's important to write down. Okay. Okay, so I just finished putting in all of the normal scores with their corresponding data observations, okay? And the reason why we do this is we want to know if this graph right here is linear, all right? And how we're going to do that is we're going to use the linear correlation coefficient on L1 and L2. So that's your next step. So we have the observation, we did the normal probability plot to get the normal score, and now we're going to go to stat, calculate, and then option four, And then there's our R, and the R is at the bottom 0 0.96, 39 rounded up, 39 is going to round to 40, so 0 0.9640. Okay, so I'm going to write that down. And now um, we have to look at the critical value. If R is bigger than the critical value, the probability plot is normal, excuse me, the probability plot is linear, the distribution is normal. If R is less than the critical value, the normal probability plot is not linear. The distribution is not normal. So let's see what the um, table of critical values are. What's our sample size? Oh, geez, let's see. One, two, three, four across, one, two, three, four down, so 16. Our critical value is 16, and of course, in um, 0.941. So our critical value is 0 0.941, and we just made it. We were 0 0.9640. So the R is bigger. The critical, um, the critical val, val, excuse me, excuse me, the linear correlation coefficient is bigger than the critical value. Okay, so that means if R is bigger than the critical value, it's linear. And if probability plot is linear, the distribution is normal. So let's, um, let's find out where that is. So we have 0.967. All right, there must be a little bit of a rounding error in there somewhere. Um, so the correlation and the expected z-scores, that linear correlation coefficient is the R. It exceeds the uh, critical value, which was 0.941 according to the table. So it means the probability plot is linear, and so the data comes from a normal population. So the answer is C.